shore of Europe's largest alpine lake on the edge of spectacular French Alps. It's round number two of the 2017 UIM Formula One H2O World Championship for Power Boating, the 21st Grand Prix of France. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Steve Michael. So glad to greet you today near the Swiss border on a lovely Lac Le Mans shore. And joining me in the broadcast booth is my longtime partner and two-time winner here in France, Jonathan Jones. And as we get ready for all the great storylines leading up to today's Grand Prix, Let's take a moment and give you a taste of this picturesque region with a video postcard of breathtaking Evian, France. Elegantly perched on the border between France and Switzerland, northeast of Geneva in the East French Alps, Evian's internationally renowned healing waters have lured health-conscious visitors from around the world since 1824. It's France's most celebrated spa resort. But this is only the beginning. There are so many must-sees on your tour to Evian. Start by going to the famous water and musical gardens, followed by a trip to the thermal spa. Then try your luck at the largest theme casino in Europe. And how about a 35-minute boat trip across the lake to the lovely Riviera town of Lausanne on the Swiss side. Evian recently won the award for the best resort in France by the World Travel Awards, judging the total beauty, the proximity to summer and winter activities, all along with its famous healing waters, adding up to one of Europe's must-see areas. Feel more culture. Feel more water. Feel more relaxation. Feel more fun. Feel Evian France. Welcome back to the exquisite holiday and spa resort city of Evian. And the battle on the water today begins with this highly challenging six-pin circuit that has seen so many dramas and unknowns associated with the past years. Jonathan, how brave do you have to be to run flat out on this 2.1-kilometer race course lap after lap? This is going to be a tough one. There's no doubt about that. We've got a two-kilometer circuit. We come down to the start line there, and then we've got a 50-meter or so turn into number one, and then a long, long 500 meters straight right down to turn number two and three that's where there could be a lot of action we saw a lot of thrills and spills there last year out of three down the back straight got to be careful lots of waves in this area now and then the only right hander that we've got you can see it halfway down the straight there and if they get it right into that 400 and feet 450 meter straight i beg your pardon down into number five and between five and six probably a bit more action there so watch out for that area round number six 300 meters down to the finish line all right, well, the largest starting field of drivers of the year have come here this afternoon. 20 drivers from 11 different countries, including five rookies and five drivers from France, hoping to win at their Grand Prix. Here's how the lineup for today is 21st Grand Prix of France. Defending race champion Alex Corella back on the pole for the second straight year. Philippe Shep hoping to finish the race as he is a three-time world champion. As is next him, Sami Selyu, a two-time world champion, second in this championship so far. And a good run by Grant Frass down in the number five position for the Australian. And then Marit Stromoy. As we go farther down, Eric Stark made a charge from 20th up to 9th on the very last seconds of qualifying and a great run. And you can see down a little bit farther, a big surprise, Sean Torrente, who we expected to see run for the pole, crashed out this morning, and he ended up in 15th place. So, Jonathan, we're going to see a lot of drivers moving up. Well, Alex Corella ran a sparkling 48.98 to earn his second straight pole in Evian. Was he expecting that result after qualifying only 5th in the opening round of Portugal? Let's find out. It was really a very good job today. One month of, uh, of work in Italy for, and uh, we get paid today. It was good to set up the boat uh, very quickly after free practice and uh, be in the top three for a boat outside on the water. So I had the chance to have uh, a really clear lap. So I did a wrong knock in this lap. So perfect. Big smiles for him. Now, Philippe Shep, the hero in France, now a three-time world champion, has never finished a race here in two tries. How's he feeling starting second and chasing for his first podium on home waters today? For sure, his second position on the grid is good, and uh, if I make a good start, uh, I can get the, the victory. But uh, first, we do make a safe start, and uh, we'll see, because um, I think the water condition feel uh, hard because on the end it's not, not easy uh, and uh, first finish the race after we check. 
He'd love to pick up the title today. We'll have to find out. Now, American Sean Torrente came to France leading in the pole position championship after starting first in Portugal. He made a mistake, and it cost him the start front position for today's race. Sean, what happened? Oh, I was the unlucky fool to hit a few rollers coming into the course there. Just bad timing, wrong spot, right time, I guess, or something like that. The race is the race, you know that. So we'll pass a bunch of boats, Could put a good setup in it. The boat, luckily, is fine. So nothing really wrong with it. We don't have to change any parts, really. So uh, see what we got. I think we'll be all right. All right, Sean Torrente, confident. We'll keep an eye on his charge. He'll be moving up from the back of the pack, as will Francesco Catando and other surprising drivers. Jonas Anderson starting down in that 12th spot. He's going to be looking to come charging up from the back as well. I'll tell you what, it all began back in 1981 in Vichy when the Dutch driver Case van der Vilden came up here with the first victory. And racing legend Renato Molinari... A three-time winner here is here today. And no one has won more than Italian Guido Capellini, a four-time winner. And alongside me, sitting next to me, the 91 and 94 French champion, Jonathan Jones of Wales, ready to give you all the insight with me this afternoon. Now, two years ago, Evian delivered an epic moment with driver's career when Kuwaiti driver Yusuf Al-Robian won on Lac Le Mans. And last year, it was Alex Corella. Corella on the pole this afternoon, hoping to make it two in a row. Well, race fans from all throughout Europe have converged here this weekend to enjoy the scenery and sounds of Formula One here on beautiful Lac Le Mans. And as we anticipate the start of the Grand Prix, the one-minute sign has gone up. The drivers are ready. The crews are ready. The tension starts to build, building up at one time as the drivers now settle in the age-old question, who's the fastest on water? And we're about to find out here on the 21st Grand Prix of France from lovely Lake Le Mans. Round number two of this championship. Can Alex Corella come up? The light's just seconds away from coming on. A 30-second board is being shown. All eyes. Drew, now as the drivers get set, they look out onto the water. And all eyes are glued to the official starter. They wait for the lights to come on. Three rows of lights will come on, and when they go off, we are going racing. We hold our breath here. We anticipate 45 laps around for the second round of this championship. First row of lights on. Second row of lights come on. Third row of lights come on, and they go off, and the drivers explode away from the dock, and they go charging down toward turn number one, the commitment boy, and it's 485 meters down in toward turn number five, and jumping out of the lead is Alex Corella as he tries to hold off the three-time world champion, Philippe Shep of France. You've got two drivers up front with six world championships fighting, and Sami Celio right behind in third. He's got a pair of world championships himself. So it's Corella coming by. In second place, Philippe Shep about ten boat legs back. Got a good battle side by side for third place, Jonathan. Yeah, what a start there by Corella. Absolutely superb. Normally we see Chap getting fastest into the first turn boy, but today not that was not the case. Sami Celio hanging on in third there, but Fanny Alcon he putting on a good show there. We haven't seen him running up so far in the past. Yeah, Daniel Quimsy slid way wide out of turn number two and lost a bit of ground here. There you see second place, Philippe Shep. Sami Celio trying to reel him back in. They've had tremendous battles the last uh, eight years. These two have been battling side by side with each other. But right now, breaking away from the pack is our leader, Alex Corella. Corella looked blindingly fast this morning in qualifying. He got that pole position. He deserved it. And at the moment, he's got all that clear water ahead of him, Steve. So this is where he really does need to make a ground before he starts coming across the back markers. Three boats wide, almost four, coming out of the final turn. This big battle for fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth place. They're almost glued together as they work their way down. As they head down, Marie Stromoy with Eric Stark, Dwight Benevente dropping back a spot in the ninth position. Jonas Anderson down at tenth. And we watch the progress. Can Sean Torrente move up? Right now it's slow for the American. He's down in 14th place. So you can see that Chiap now slowly but surely pulling away from third place, which is Sami Celio running a barbar boat built by Massimo Ruggiero in northern Italy. And then Fami Alquamzi, who has been lacking in pace for quite some time. But he seems to be hanging on in there at the moment and doing a great job. 
Torrente now trying to make a move. He slipped himself up past uh, the number 12 machine of Philip Roms. So he's moving up in the order. Torrente is starting to charge his way and claw his way to the front. He is on a tear right now. Yeah, but we saw there that he turned the boat over in uh, qualifying this morning and he almost did the same there. The boat started skipping on top of the water. The nose nearly went under the water, which would have cost him uh, another DNF. But as we go through there, Torrente fighting like heck now as he works his way through the field. Just work pass Marit Stroma who started in the seventh spot she slid all the way down in the 11th position Trente now up in the top 10 in that 10th place position takes up the hunt on the Portuguese driver Duarte Benavente who's just behind Jonas Anderson in 8th place yeah you're really doing a great job there Duarte Benavente just ahead of Torrente he's making up some ground there's no doubt about that he said to you Steve prior to the race he said I think we can do really well here even though we're right at the back when we start and you can see Torrente there overshooting the turn boy, uh, Duarte Benevente on the outside of him, Torrente switching lanes, going to the outside of uh, of uh, Benevente there, so that he can get a cleaner line back into number turn number 6 before they go down that 360 metre straight. Jonathan, you've seen it so many times you've seen fast markers coming from the back they made the, had a misfortunate start in qualifying and then they start from the back of the field, they come charging up, but you're going to hit a wall eventually, because the faster boats up front are going faster and faster you can't pass as many lap after Lap. That's right. What will happen now is Sean, as we've got him on shot there, again, trying to pass Benevente, who himself is running with some good pace out there today. But what you tend to find is that Torrente, he'll probably move up to about sixth, maybe seventh, and then he's going to find it very, very tough as he overtakes Benevente on the outside. Benevente on the out inside, Torrente on the outside as they go around the yellow turn, boy, and down into turn number five. So Torrente finding some speed, sliced and diced his way past the Portuguese driver in the right-hander, turn number four. Alex Corella, they found speed, Jonathan, I don't know where they got it, but I'll tell you what, they worked diligently for over a month in Italy to get their engines back in place, and right now they are steaming. Corella running away from the pack right now, 6.44 seconds ahead of Philippe Shep as we take a look now at Eric Stark, who's started ninth he's up two places he's in seventh yeah he's doing a good job but let's go to the lead at the moment so we still have Corella leading this Grand Prix Philippe Chap in second position 6.44 seconds behind the lead boat Sammy Selio another four seconds behind Chiap Selio now 10 seconds behind the leading boat so it looks to me at the moment as though Alex Corella hopefully they'll have a good the engines and everything will work well for him this uh, this afternoon but he really is putting on a blind show out there. He's got terrific pace. Yeah, Corella now just has passed two of the drivers from the Maverick team, a three-boat team out of France. He worked his way, first of all, past the first-timer today, running for the first time in Formula 1, Banjo Robert. And then uh, he also passed uh, Amore Jusson. Both are rookies, and both have been lapped early on here in lap number four. As you can see, the two, two, two team Sweden boats there, neck and neck as they go into turn number one on the uh, number two on the far side. Torrente now trying everything that he can but it's going to be one thing catching them it's going to be another thing passing them so there we have Stark and then you can see Jonas Anderson just behind him and then Torrente switching to the inside seeing if he can get some clear water and overtake them Flying in formation are the two Swedes with Team Sweden. You've got Jonas Anderson in eighth. you got the youngster Eric Stark, a four-time F2 world champion who came out this morning late. He was out in the last minute and a half. They were changing an engine. They were getting him back out there. He desperately took one lap to get used to the track, and then he came out and set a blistering pace. He went from 20th all the way up to ninth in qualifying, and he's moved up two spots. He's in seventh. Yeah, you said Torrente was going to hit the wall at some stage during this race. I think, Steve, he has just hit that wall because the pace between Torrente and the two-team Sweden boats is so, so close. I think he's going to really struggle now. He's going to have to wait for one of them to make a mistake. Maybe he can get on the inside of them as he tries there. Then he switches to the outside. You can see Team Sweden there, neck and neck, and Torrente doing everything. He's switching to the outside. He's switching to the inside. Down to the yellow, the only right-hander that we've got here. Torrente, who finished runner-up in this championship a year ago, Got the pole position at the opening round nine weeks ago in Portimao, Portugal. Led the race the first nine laps and then dropped out with an engine problem. This year running with Ron Anderson engine power. So you know he's got some strong engine on the back of that boat on the transom. But at the same time, they've struggled in finding a, an engine that will last the full length of a race. So 
We're just waiting to see if this is going to be a ticking time bomb or not for Torrente. Yeah, Stark looking good there. I mean, he did so well in Portugal about two months ago. He was in second position with a, a good, strong race. And unfortunately, two laps from the end, he broke down. So let's hope we don't have the, back, the breakdowns that we did have in Portugal. As you see there, Torrente again trying to get some clear water on the inside. But I can tell you now, Jonas Anderson is not going to make it easy for him. Now, if you remember, though, a couple of years ago, Torrente passed Jonas Anderson uh, at the very end of a race to get himself onto a podium. And he's going to try desperately to keep charging up. Now, at the front, again, Corella continues to slide himself away from the competition. The real estate's getting longer and longer. It's now almost 10 seconds, 9.26 seconds. Philippe Shep ahead of Corella. And Sami Celio about four seconds back. So the difference between first and third is just over 13 seconds. What a run for Corella. Yeah, he's doing a great job out there. Apparently, they've designed a new boat. They've worked on the engines because, as we said earlier, they did have a lot of engine problems in Portugal running this new green fuel that we've got this year. But Capolini said to me they've worked very, very hard. They picked 11 engines. So they have a good supply of engines for this race, that's for sure. And they said that uh, they've done a month's testing in Italy prior to coming here, setting out identical circuit to this, so they were really well, well prepared as far as the propellers, the boat, and the engine, and the balance was concerned, and it looks like that testing has paid off. There we continue to watch the battle for eighth place right now. To your left of your screen is Jonas Anderson, and the blue boat is the American Sean Torrente, second in this championship a year ago, and he's itching to get back, uh, bring the luck a little bit back to his way after he led the opening round. But right now, Jonas Anderson, the wily veteran who is out here running, Anderson, who is starting his 83rd race, uh, won a couple of races ago. But for him, Portugal was his first DNF since Evian last year. So uh, he'd love to finish an Evian today. He's got two poles in his last uh, three starts coming into the weekend, but he didn't get it today. Now, in free practice this morning, Jonas broke an engine, and one of his mechanics was telling me just prior to the race that he said, we're going to have to detune the engine just a little bit so that we've got reliability. Jonas was dead against doing this, Steve. He said, no, I want to run out there at the front, but, the, you know, at the end, you've got to finish these races. And Jonas knows if he can really wind the engine up with his maximum power then he's as fast as anybody out there so do bear in mind that he's not running quite as fast as he normally would as you see Jonas on the outside Sean Torrente on the inside is Torrente going to be making a move on him Torrente getting closer and closer <laughs> reeling him in as he's trying to set him up for a big pass here he is really flying on the race circuit Jonas Anderson desperately trying to hold on to that eighth place position on the headsets, getting strategy. Torrente decides to go inside on that corner. I don't know if it paid off for him or not, but they continue to fight. They're seventh, eighth, and ninth positions on the race circuit. They're very close together. Yeah, it looks to me like Stark has just got a little bit better pace, as you can see. The one of the uh, Abu Dhabi ports. What number is that? It's number the six? leader. It's, it's the, the leader. leader. Alex Corral has got the. Uh, well, he's got the you hood can see open. the top of the canopy is flapping there, and oh, there's, there's a, a yellow problem. flag. One of the boats has gone over. Oh, no, what Trask. a shame. Looks like it's Grant Trask, the Australian, the youngster, the rookie, who's fighting for Rookie of the Year award, who came into this race today, coming out of beautiful uh, quality time as he came out in qualifying and got fifth on the starting grid, and he was sitting in fifth all the way through. Oh, so dear. the youngster, the 27-year-old out of uh, Brisbane, Australia, has come to a stop in a hard, hard manner. Tell you what, Grant Trask is a cool, calm customer, and he's going to have a great career, but uh, a mistake was made somewhere on the race circuit. We didn't see what happened at this point, but uh, he's in the water, and Corella popping open the hood. Now, we've seen this before, where drivers will pop open the, the lid on their canopy, and uh, it usually doesn't go well, but uh, maybe that's just a up the canopy top but I don't think that was the case as we see Grant Trask there wake, waving at the crowds um, Trask I've got to tell people this but
all to the all the controls and everything to suit him and uh, he's doing a great job out there and i really was hoping that he would have uh, certainly been a top six finisher today but you can see they're towing the boat back there he's obviously barrel rolled the boat at some stage we may be able to pick up that uh, incident uh, with one of the cameras as we uh, as we speak but uh, the one thing that this is going to do now is going to give people like torrente and also chiapu who's in second position an opportunity to start closing on that lead boat because it's all going to be now on the restart all the boats will line up behind each other and the uh, officer of the day uh, Ruiz Biero <coughs> he basically dropped the, the start flag at any given position on this circuit so nobody's going to know and the crew chiefs are going to be talking by radio communication to the drivers the drivers have to be very very careful get that boat ready to on to launch forward and maybe because they'll be a lot closer together that'll help them overtake each other so this could be really interesting on the restart especially for people like chap who is falling way behind the lead boat of Corella. basically what you're saying is they're going to pinch up they're going to quarry in very very close together this reels everybody back in now we had talked about the difference between first and third Corella had built up a cushion of almost 14 seconds on Sami Celio he was uh, half a uh, half a minute ahead of uh, Torrente but as you said now all that is thrown out it's like a crapshoot now and years ago we used to use pace boats but now we let the drivers get ready to set the pace they're in communication with themselves and the crew chiefs and of course the race commissioner uh, Lu Luis Riberio's there letting people know to move up get faster he's talking to the crew chiefs and telling him to talk to the driver and get bunched up and get ready to go so it'll be interesting strategy who comes out faster out of this restart than the other driver yeah and the secret is to get the boat best uh, set up for acceleration without trying to get too much air under the tunnel so they'll trim the engines out on the back and the drivers will be concentrating at 110 percent for when they know that that green flag is going to drop they won't know until the crew chief actually radios to them go 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 and this is where we may see even a change for the uh, for the um for the overall lead of the, of the race because we do know that uh, Chiap is pretty quick on the uh, on the restart and uh, it'll all be to play for so when you when you think about it Carella there all that lead that he built up driving so hard beautiful control as he pulled away from Chiap in that second position he's lost all of it and we've basically got another restart you can see the boats there Steve closing up to each other Osprey Rescue is back on station up oh, Chiap switches to the outside there don't know what happened there looks like he hooked the boat and you can see the water now clearing off the screen as he follows Carella just waiting for that restart he'll come right alongside him he can't overtake him until the flag is dropped all right it's out even out even as they line them up they canter them off one side to the other as they try to pinch them up. And as you mentioned, the Osprey Rescue Team is back into position. We hold our breath now as they come down this front straightaway. And the yellow flag is still shown. By the way, the Osprey Rescue Team, as you look at Luis Ribeiro, telling people to slow it down, bring it back down. The back end of the field is trying to catch up in a hurry, and we're not going to have a restart until that happens. That's absolutely right, and you can see Sammy Sellio there, maybe a little bit too far forward, because he wants to make a move on uh, on Chiap here if he can. Carella still the leading boat, but look how close they are as they come round turn number two. There's a short shoot there. I don't think they're going to start this race until it's on the long back straight, or even the straight just in front of the uh, in front of the crowds here, but as you can see, a Carella there, Chiap very very close in second watching every move intimidating him as they close up for that restart and Luis Rivera you see the race commissioner in the white shirt is not happy he's saying no we need to bunch this up get everybody together I, what he's saying is I don't want slow drivers in the front with accelerating fast drivers in the yeah. back because yeah. then they'll all accordion into each other so he wants the same even pace but just bunch them up a little more he's not afraid to go around and do it again because uh, you look at the laps there's still a long way to go we've clicked off 14 counters out of the 45 we've got scheduled this afternoon in the record books welcome back here we want to greet you here on a day that is a bit cool but uh, very comfortable here in Evian France cooler than normal but the conditions on the race circuit are picture perfect I'm Stephen Michael your host Jonathan Jones two-time winner 
of the World Championship and also a two-time winner here in France. Oh, Green flag it. comes out and off they go. And as they go down into turn number two, and it looks like Corella continues to have a problem with the canopy on that boat. Side by side, Celio trying to pinch in and take the Frenchman for second place. It looks like Celio is sending him way wide, giving Corella a chance to make good his escape. And now Celio slides up into second place ahead of the Frenchman. That was a great restart there by Sammy Celio from Finland. He was bang on the money, and you can see there now that uh, Ahmed Al Hamri looks like he's closing down on Chiap. Has Chiap got a problem there? Still hanging on in third. And right but behind him, Jonathan, is uh, we watch uh, the American driver Torrente making a real push. Torrente trying to get up in the top five. This is real drama up front. Torrente now flying. You can just see him come into shot there, and all of a sudden it looks like Chiap's got some kind There's of problem. Could be the problems. boat's not running right. Torrente again is moving up. He's up at third slot. Steve. I know, he's really hauling now. Could there be a major problem? You know it is right now for the Frenchman. He's dropping farther and farther back. He's lost his pace. And now Ahmed al Hamley pushing in a three-boat battle on the outside. Eric Stark trying to make the run for fourth place. Yeah, the other thing is that you can see there the Corella in that lead boat at the moment. 3.05 ahead of Sami Celio. And you can see the top, the, the top of the canopy flapping all the time. Does that make the boat dangerous? Will they have black flag him and pull him off the circuit? Or are they going to let him run for the entire race in that with the boat in that sort of condition? So Corella continues to lay just over three seconds with that canopy askew right now. Trying to make good his escape. Celio drifting farther back. The lead's building. As he goes whistles by, it's up to 4.08 seconds. But Torrente is right there in third. What a charge for the Americans. He came all the way from 15th. He's up to third. That's a hell of a drive by Torrente. I mean, he, he said he was going to be aggressive. He said he was going to push hard. And his crew chief was bang on the money there as he slowly but surely closes that gap between himself and Sammy Celio. And what are the odds of the three-time world champion are Philippe Shep dropping out for the third race in a row in France. He was slowing down and he was heading toward the paddock. And there you go on board with a three-time world champion. What can you say? Three years in France, he's never even made the podium here in his home country, much yeah, less finish. That's tough, that is. And it always, I remember racing in my home country of Wales. We used to have a Grand Prix there. And goodness, whatever I did and whatever I tried, I was so fast in qualifying. And we had niggly problems and had to retire from every race. And it, it's so destroying. But you can see there, as Jack pulls off the circuit, that's his day done. Nothing can be done there again. You were picking up Torrente there, but I think Sammy Celio seems to be having the pace because where are we? Carella leading this race, 4.3 seconds ahead of Sammy Celio, but Torrente 6.4 behind the lead boat. Am Hamley, the other boat from uh, Dubai, doing a great job out there, but he's 12 seconds off the pace at the moment. Yeah, the victory team, third and fourth. Let's keep an eye now as our leader comes whistling by because last time Carella gained about a tenth of a second on Celio, a lot less than before, as you see. See the man who's the defending race champion here, three-time world champion, as Alex Corella comes whistling by. The difference now between he and Torrente, he gained about a tenth of a second on the driver from Florida, and he gained about a tenth of a second on Celio. So Corella's going faster than the second and third boats at the moment, but can he keep this pace up? all the way through to the end we're not even close to the halfway point yet 19 laps in the record books 45 in this chapter and i'm sure that that top you can see the lid there flapping in the wind i'm sure that's going to distract him certainly going to make a difference to his, his driving as he uh, as he hurls the boat down there into turn number five down that short shoot 120 meters into six and comes round to the finish line again Boat looking absolutely superb on the water. It's so well balanced. And then we pick up second. Sammy Sally have just gone out of shot. And behind him, Sean Torrente trying everything he can to close the gap between him and Sellio in second. Well, he's doing his best, but he's dropping back, as is Sellio. On the leader, Alex Corella. Corella continues to set a blistering pace. His best time so far is the fast time of the day. Did a 50.83 last time around, a 51.2. For Celio, he did a 51.8, and Sean Torrente did a 52 flat. So that's telling you that Corella is running a lot faster than the drivers behind him right now. And it also tells you that Sonny Celio in that second position 
is just slightly quicker by a couple of hundredths on the lap from Sean Torrente. And that is not enough to be able to pull away from him. So Torrente again, probably hoping that Celio makes a mistake, hooks up on a corner or whatever. You can see Celio there trying everything he can. That boat is almost airborne as it comes down past the start finish line. Celio in his 145th start, he hasn't won in the last five races. He's had five podiums in his last six, however. His last win was in Harbin almost a year ago. He's had six podiums in his last 16 starts. And for Torrente, this is his 36th start. And, of course, he won the last round in Sharjah, finished second in the championship a year ago. He's had podiums in five of his last eight finishes. Just saw Bartek Marcelak, the Polish driver, who did so well in Portugal. Unfortunately, he's had to retire as well. I can see his boat just creeping as he goes around the circuit. But anyway, back to the uh, back to the race itself. Carella still hanging in there with Sami Selio second. Torrente third. Alhamli in fourth. Jonas Anderson in fifth position. Uh, Fanny Alquamzi in sixth. And Stark fighting again for seventh, but he's lost one slot. Torrente came around the last time around. He did a sub-51 second lap, but he's still 7.2 seconds back at Corella. And Sami Celio is not drifting any farther back. Corella ran a little bit slower, so uh, it stays at stagnant about almost five seconds between first and second place. Yeah, and you can see now the Thani Alquamzi slowly but surely there. Closing the gap on Jonas Anderson for that fifth position. Thani really on a charge now. He's obviously getting the hang of this rough water. He feels a lot more comfortable than he did earlier on. Both in shot there. Jonas leading just by a second or so from Thani Alquamzi in the Abu Dhabi boat. Yeah, as you said, just a second between the two. And another person who's on an interesting drive forward is Francesco Cotando. Now the uh, driver from Milan is in a brand new boat. The keel never even touched the water before he arrived here and put it in the water this morning. A brand new revolutionary boat. He ended up uh, with an engine change starting all the way in 19th position. And uh, right now he's up to 10th. He's made up room. Yeah, the only thing is, Steve, looking at his times there, he's doing around 53, 53 and a half seconds a lap. And the lead boats are running at 50.8. So there's a lot of difference in the pace there. He's doing a good job. And as you say, he's up to 10th. But uh, I think he's struggling somewhat to, to make up more ground. Yeah, all three drivers in the top three are running uh, 51 second laps, almost steady. Last time around, Celio, about two tenths of a second he gained on the later Corella. But it's very, very tight right now between the top three. Yeah, and you can see Stark there now pushing as hard as he can. And Thani Alquams, he's still hungry on there behind him and uh, not at the moment being able to close the gap you see, see Thani there slightly overshooting the turn boy taking that last turn boy coming down the start finish line let's see if we can get both of them in shot Stark and Thani there they are you can see the gap Thani trying everything that he humanly can to close that gap but Stark just seems to he have that edge on him and can just keep ahead of him of a cushion of about two seconds there's the push now as you see Sami Celio as uh, we take a look at our leader, Alex Corella. Corella with that canopy still wide open. As we now have gone past the halfway point of this race. 24 in the record books, 45 scheduled this afternoon. Steve Michael with Jonathan Jones. We're glad you're with us here. Round number two of this UIM Formula One H2O World Championship for Power Building. Up next. We take off in early August. We head off on the 7th of August, uh, and uh, we have a race in Harbin, our second year in a row, for going to that lovely city up in northern China. That should be spectacular. It certainly will, and just out of shot there, you can see Carella coming up against some of the back markers. There's Mike Samura, the young uh, German driver that uh, just started in Formula 1, actually. He's just about done a season now, and uh, he's slowly but surely getting a feel for the, for the boat, and uh, trying to make some progress but you know it's it is very very difficult he's jumped from formula four to formula one it's an enormous leap and it's going to take him a year or two before he can get everything dialed in and start fighting for for podium finishes as we go back to Carella, that top still flapping around steve in the wind is it hindering him yeah, right now, as we look on the screen here, you can see Corella, he went blasting by. He did a sub-51 second lap, and he again is going very, very quickly, as you see his teammate, Thania Quimsey, in a number five machine. So Team Abu Dhabi, who had such a struggle in the opening round, two of their three drivers didn't even start. 
And uh, starting in the back of the pack was the driver who's currently leading this race. And Alex Corella started uh, in Portimao and ended up finishing in fourth. Had a great run. As you look at Sami Celio, Celio, a two time world champion. Celio, who won this race back in 2007. We were on the west coast of France at La Rochelle. That was his first ever victory. You can see him being hounded now by Sean Torrente. This is still a very tight. And nervy battle between second place Celio and third place Torrente as they come down the front straightaway. Yeah, I bet Celio's looking in his mirrors there. He knows he can't afford to make a mistake. I'm pretty sure he knows as well that to close up on uh, the lead boat of Carella is going to be very, very difficult. So basically what he's got to do now is he's got to focus himself in, Steve, and he's got to make sure that that gap between himself and third place Torrente does not close down. All right, Celio went a little bit quicker. Four-tenths of a second last time around, and Alex Corella, the lead has been trimmed down to 4.58 seconds. Sean Torrente sitting back at about 7.38 seconds in third. So last time around, Torrente and Corella were almost dead even, but Celio had a fast lap. Then he gained ground on the leader, and here he comes down that front straightaway as he comes flying down the finish flyer as he is sprinting and charging his way closer and closer to Corella. Yeah, we're talking three very, very experienced drivers now right at the sharp end here. Podium finishers at the moment, providing that they can keep going, and uh, you can see Celio there as he lets the boat run loose. Look how he floats it on top of the water. And these are really difficult driving conditions out here. Thank goodness the wind dropped from yesterday, otherwise we probably wouldn't have had a Grand Prix. But uh, we've had qualifying this morning and testing and the Grand Prix within a matter of hours, so a lot of pressure on these drivers. Sami Celio in his 19th year he's 42 years old he's from Helsinki Finland and he's been racing a long long time he's got 25 career polls 13 wins in the column and he knows how to get to the front he has worked his way desperately up and uh, many times he's been a runner for the world title he lost the world title twice in the last lap uh, of a uh, race himself and uh, right now he's sitting there and knowing that he's just waiting for Alex Corella to overdrive the boat or make a mistake and he'll jump all over him because it's 5.19 seconds between first and second place. Yeah, but it's only about 1.5 seconds between second and third. So as Sami Celio is taking on these back markers, Sean Torrenti is watching every of all of his moves and he is slowly closing down on him. And once he gets right up alongside him, boy, are we going to have a battle for that second slot? All right, we watch Eric Stark on the screen as he goes around. You can see him skip through. You can see the dark skies that we've had. It was raining heavily by uh, mid-afternoon, but it's let up a bit. The clouds are rising. And across, you can see uh, Switzerland on the back side of the lake. And, oh, no, what a shame. We've lost uh, Mike Zemira, the German driver. He has pulled out of the race. He started in the last place. And, again, the learning curve continues for this uh, F4 world champion yeah he had some problems with the fuel tank on that boat yesterday and today and uh, you know i do know that uh, one of his mechanics said you know we've got to be really careful because otherwise we're not going to get enough fuel into the engine and he could well seize and let's hope that's not what has happened as we go back to the lead boat sorry we go back to uh, thani alquamzi now in in number five boat. all right thani alquamzi who's out there running he's another veteran 16 years in this series, he failed to uh, start in uh, the first round in Portugal. And for him, he's looking for his eighth career victory. Thani El Quimsey, who started a long, long time ago with Team Abu Dhabi, and Scott Gilman was right there with him, his old teammate. And now, of course, Scott Gilman's the team manager of their chief rival as a team victory. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how he continues to play out. It's been a while since Thani El Quimsey won a race. As Thani's gone, this is 20th race without a victory. Yeah, and you can see Eric Stark there behind Thani, and he's lost a fair amount of ground, actually, on him. So it looks like Jonas Anderson and, uh, and Thani Alquamzi are slowly but surely actually pulling away. And, but Al Hamley's running well there in that fourth position, just ahead of Anderson. Tell you what, the big news is Celio's closing as he's getting closer and Ooh. closer to Corella. It's less than three seconds now. 2.96. Torrente's gained two seconds on Alex Corella. So second and third are wedging their way closer and closer to the leader. 
This is where back markers may come into play. If they don't get out of the way, then it only needs one little slip up from Carella in the lead boat, and uh, all of a sudden, Sani Celio there will pounce. You can see both of them in shot there. Carella just ahead, coming around the right hander. Sani Celio pushing for all he's worth in that second position. 2.960 between first and second. And the challenge for the lead continues to heat up as they work out of turn number five and six. There you can see Carella right behind him, Celio. As as he comes whistling through the haze and cutting his way as he slices his way fast. Slower traffic as he comes with Torrente right behind him. And it has to be a difference with that, uh, that canopy top there on that DSE flapping around all the time. It must be distracting him a little bit. And Sammy Sellier there coming to overtake Cantando. He was one of the back markers there. Nice cornering by Sellio there. You can see on the inside there, Sellio and... Uh, and Carella in the same shot there. Carella coming around into the turn boy down the far long straight. Yeah, and the big thing is the two of them, Celio and Torrente, just said identical times, and they're going faster again than Corella by three tenths of a second. There's Michael Jenkins, the crew chief of uh, Sammy Celio, talking to him on the radio, telling him, come on, boy, push a little bit harder. There's hardly anything now between you and the winning this Grand Prix. Fingers crossed Sammy will keep everything together. He was third in the Grand Prix of Portugal two months ago. Corella was nowhere because he broke down, and it looks at the moment as though Corella is getting a lot of pressure because what's happening is Torrente has been pushing Celio so hard for that second position. Celio himself has then been closing up on the lead boat of Carella. He just had a chance to see Torrente combined. He just lapped the 10th place driver, Francesco Catando. So Catando has been lapped by the top three so far. That's the difference in the pace between the top three and the 10th place driver in this race. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier, Steve. You know, these are the true professionals, these top three drivers. Carella won the World Championship many times. He's a very cool and cool customer. Sami Celio, he, he also a many-time world champion, pushing for as hard as he's worth. But like I said earlier on, it's going to be one thing catching him as you see that canopy floating around there. Looks like the UIM are quite happy that if it flies off, it won't uh, danger the boat at all. And I can see that he is close. He's opening that gap, Steve, 4.53. Alex Corella just set the fast lap of the race. He did a 50.39 and he gained 1.3 seconds on Sami Celio as he sliced his way through traffic. Yeah, it wow. looks like he's got everything under control. I'm sure that the crew chief that is talking to him on the radio is telling him, watch the telemetry, make sure that the engine's not overheating, make sure that the RPM is not too high. If the boat gets a little bit loose, bring it down gently. Don't be too aggressive. Keep there, keep a rhythm. That's important, Steve. Once you get into a rhythm, you just seem to focus and then you can get cut through that water very cleanly you can pick up the back markers and he's doing a great job out there less than 10 laps to go here as we take a look nine left on this race course today 45 in the record books we got 36 right now clicked off and there you can see Celio as he comes by now Celio did a 50.21 he just went six tenths of a second faster than Corella so he's back to with under four seconds he's reeling him back in Jonathan yeah but with 10 laps to go Steve you know Sammy has got to start making a move very very soon if he wants to try and win this Grand Prix it looks like he's got the pace on Corella but they are so close in times that it's going to be a hell of a thing for him to overtake Sean Torrente there now still in third position 7.7 seconds behind the lead boat and about four seconds now between him and Sammy Celio so Celio has definitely opened the gap on Torrente Torrente looks like he lost a little bit of pace he's not running as strongly last time a 52.93 so uh, he's losing his pace and he's down 9.1 seconds in that third place position the difference between Sean Torrente as we watch the final battle for the post podium spot and his teammate Ahmed Al Hamli in the number three boat is really uh, almost uh, 18 seconds so it's really one two three separating from the rest of the field Carella really now has to focus nine laps to go to the end of the Grand Prix he knows he's got a good cushion there he knows he's got everything under control he's 2.5 liter 400 horse
He's strapped in with a five-point harness. He feels really comfortable in there, there's no doubt about it. The boat is running beautifully on the water as he skips along around this, uh, this circuit uh, on the lake in France. Interestingly enough, we noticed as Torrente went by, his canopy has been uh, adjusted up a little bit. He may have unhooked the canopy. So uh, these leaders in the top three are now in a position where they're getting cooler air in. But at the same time, they're still running a fast pace. Corella with a 50.52. He went uh, seven tenths of a second faster than Celio. And Torrente's dropping off the pace. He's sitting at 52.28. So the second lap in a row that he ran over 52 seconds, he's now 10.9 seconds back in third. Yeah, there's no doubt about it that Torrente has been told Take it easy. You're not going to catch Celio for second. Finish for a podium here and get some points on the table because, you know, he desperately needs those points as uh, it's a long season, but, you know, third position will be a good finish for him, bearing in mind the accident that he had this morning and exactly where he started on the pontoon. Yeah, hats off to him from starting all the way down in that 15th position and then moving up into third as you get a chance now to watch Donny Quimsey down in the sixth spot. He did a 53-6 the last time around. His fast lap was a 48-01, if that's correct. That would have been by far the fastest lap of the race, but uh, we'll uh, have to check on that one. But uh, that seems a bit uh, pretty optimistic on the part of that team. But you see Jonas Anderson right there. He's in fifth. Yeah. Having said that, Steve, you know, um, the boats are now getting a lot lighter. And the amount of fuel that's on board is pretty much the same as they had in qualifying, you know, earlier on this afternoon. So there's no reason why he can't start pushing now into the 48. So that could be a, that could be a definite time there as we see one of the boats thundering through there. We've got the, on, uh, the camera, which is fixed on the helicopter, looking down at these boats as they tear around the circuit. All right, less than five. Five laps to go as you watch Donny L. Quimsey come whistling by the start-finish line. And he and Jonas Anderson still tied up in that battle with going on uh, in the front. And there's Eric Stark trying to take sixth-place position away from uh, Quimsey. Let's just see how that those two go at it. There you see Jonas Anderson in the fifth position. And he's got Donny right behind him. And you can see Jonas doing his best. He's caught up. Thani is and Team Sweden it's a bit of a sandwich for him he's got Jonas in the front he's got Eric Stark in behind him so let's see if he can make uh, any kind of movement to try to get himself up into the top five it would be great for Thani if he could do it yeah Jonas doing a 51.5 so he's a little bit off the pace here today but as I said earlier I do know they've had to detune that engine because he blew one earlier today and he his, his crew said look we've got to try and finish this race and get some points on the table and uh, that Morgad boat that he's developed with Christian Morgad from Denmark is really doing a great job it, look, it looks like it's handling beautifully uh, out here on the, on the circuit today. Alright with less than five laps to go the unofficial fast lap of the race has gone to Sean Torrente with a 50.37 let's see if that holds up as you mentioned as these boats get lighter they remove a lot of weight they can actually go a lot faster so here on the final few laps as we continue to watch the veteran Jonas Anderson in his 83rd start and for him he had two poles in his last three starts coming in here Abu Dhabi by the way last year was his first win in 50 starts so he got a bit of a groove going at the end of the season and he came on strong yeah and that's that's a low budget team as well I mean it's amazing what they're able to do with the amount of funding that they've got and if anybody's out there watching this Grand Prix and looking to sponsor uh, a serious boat that is capable of winning, then I tell you, you needn't look any further than Jonas Anderson because a lot of experience there and doing a great job, as I said, bearing in mind the budget that they're having to run this year. So as you go back to our later, Alex Corella looking to make it two years in a row to the victory column. He won from the pole a year ago, and he'd love to win again today after he found himself uh, starting from the pole once again. It could be an ideal situation. Two years on a trot, and what a turnaround for this Team Abu Dhabi organization after having a miserable start to the year in Portugal. Now, this could be interesting, Steve, because uh, Carella in that lead boat now is coming up to lap Sami Celio's teammate, Philip Roms. Is he going to give him uh, a wide berth, or is he going to sort of hinder him a little bit, which might allow Sami Celio to close up? 3.3 seconds the gap on the last lap, two laps to go. 
Roms has having a miserable day today. Last time around, he did a 103. He's down in 14th position. Really not a factor to get into the top 10 as Celio comes screaming down the front straightaway. He continues to run hard. He gained a little bit of ground, but Celio, last time around unofficially, did a 55 1 2. So he got caught up in traffic, and uh, Corella gained a couple of more seconds on him. It's over five with just over a lap and a half to go, Jonathan. Steve, Here on the look, final lap. It looks like we're down to the final lap. It's come up on the screen. 44 out of 45. Carella has done a blinding job out there today. He comes round the right-hander, down to the last turn, boy. Over to you, Steve. All right, as he comes through, Alex Carella, the 32-year-old out of Italy, the three-time world champion. Was love to come home with a victory today to make it two in a row as Alex Corella circles around turn number six. As he comes whistling down, he heads for the checkered flag. He comes across, and Alex Corella comes by. And what a great, great run for Alex Corella as he continues to fight. And what a great win for him as he comes away with a victory five seconds over Sami Celio. And Celio did his level best to take away the victory from Corella, but Corella now has won two times in a row here in Evian from the pole. He's dominated the last two years, and Sean Torrente will come home in third, making up for his miserable luck that he had in Portugal. Picks up his first points of the year with a 12-point performance here in third place with his teammate Ahmed El Hamli coming home in third. So for Scott Gilman, third and fourth is a lot better than what they went through in Portugal. Yeah, and you know they struggled, the entire team struggled in Portugal, didn't they? They had all sorts of engine problems, and then I spoke to Capellini uh, yesterday, and I said, you know, what have you done about it? And he said, we've basically redesigned the engines, we've, uh, we've taken into account this new green fuel, and we've done a bunch of testing, we've done weeks and weeks of testing, uh, as you see Atilio uh, Gonzalez there, uh, who's worked really well with uh, the team over the years, very, very experienced uh, crew there that uh, have put that ball together for Corella this weekend, and uh, they're really pumped up, as you can see. A great result for TAC, a great result for Corella, and a great result for Abu Dhabi. So there you see him, the veteran for eight years on this tour in 47 races, now has 13 victories and 27 podiums. Alex Corella, the 32-year-old from Piacenza, Italy, Comes home with the victory and wins here for two years consecutively here on lovely Lac Le Mans. So with that, he's gained 20 more points for the victory. He now has 29 on the year. And guess what? This is the same situation, Jonathan, where we were a year ago where you had Corella coming up, leading this championship, and watching three-time world champion Philippe Shep drop out at his home Grand Prix. I gotta wonder what Philippe Shep's thinking. I mean, he's gotta be pulling the hair out of his head going, what is it gonna take for me to even finish a race here? Yeah, yeah, but you know, that's that's motor racing, isn't it, you know? You can prepare everything as to the highest standard, oh. and you know, it just it's just a bit of bad luck that you get that puts you out of the Grand Prix, but uh, Corella needed those points, Steve, you know? Like we said in, in, uh, in Portugal, uh, a couple of months ago, I mean, you know, they broke a lot of engines. He didn't finish the race, and uh, now at least he's got one win under under his collar, which is going to put him in good stead f uh, for the next uh, two Grand Prix coming up, which are in China. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. That'll be the uh, middle of uh, August. It'll be August uh, 13th, 12th and 13th. There you see uh, Florida driver Sean Torrente taking off his helmet. You know, he's got to be satisfied because he dug himself into a major hole after he blew over and yeah. uh, after stuffing the boat, he barrel rolled it, came to a stop and had to start all the way down in the 15th place. But what a restart he had. He mm. came charging up. He gained about five places on that restart yeah. and uh, put him in a situation that put him on the podium and a great job for Sean Torrente and for uh, Alex Corella. A nice job. And there you see Sami Celio, the steady veteran. He's known as the finished flyer. He comes up with another podium. He is in his 19th year of racing and for him today in 145 starts, this is his 46th podium. He's got 13 victories as well as the winner today, Alex Corella. So Corella continues to move up the charts. And by the way, Corella was the teammate of Sami Celio his rookie year when he came out of, uh, you know, Formula 1000 and moved himself up. And uh, there he was.
Yeah, I mean, um, Carella's had a, a great career. Uh, he, he was given the opportunity to come into Formula One with Massimo Ruggiero uh, a number of years ago now who saw that he had tremendous potential. And then uh, poor old Massimo lost him from, from underneath him because he was pinched by uh, the Qatar team. And, and he's never looked back. I mean, you know, because he's such a good driver, all the top teams, they want to have him as their lead driver. And it, it's shown today. I mean, you know, that experience that he's gained over a number of years now is it's just, it's just playing dividends when uh, you know you saw how he controlled that race from the start unbelievable off the pontoon on the restart he was perfect and uh, that's what wins Grand Prix all right as we take a look at the unofficial race final standings here Corella wins the race this afternoon by five seconds Celia will take second Torrente third his teammate Ahmed al Hamley comes home after not starting in Portugal in fourth a great run for Jonas Anderson and Thonio Quimsey will finish in the fifth spot and Sh uh, Eric Stark comes home in seventh position ahead of um, Reed Strumoy, who had a steady eighth place run. Mark Benevente started eighth, he finished ninth. Catando came charging up from 19th place, and that new boat that he has, a very revolutionary boat, finished 10th. And uh, there was the uh, teammate of Philippe Shep, that is uh, Peter Mora, who finished uh, farther down in the order. As you take a look at the remaining field, and Philippe Shep uh, retiring once again, officially uh, down in that 18th position as we had uh, 20 drivers from 11 different nations fighting out here. Grant Trask, what a shame for him. The rookie out of Australia who's making his presence known was running up in that fifth place, and he was running really strongly. He qualified up in that uh, fifth position and uh, was running a steady race and then uh, had a problem. We missed it. Uh, can't tell you what exactly happened to him, but obviously he crashed out of the event. We'll have to wait and find out. But he is continuing to make a wicked good impression as he fights with about six other drivers here for Rookie of the Year. Yeah, look out for him for the rest of the season because, you know, I do know that, uh, you know, their preparation is, is getting better all the time. Um, his father is supporting him with everything that he needs, and uh, they've got a really good, uh, strong crew there. The majority of the guys are all from Australia, and Australia big, does play a, quite a big part in uh, Formula One powerboat racing now with drivers and so many of the mechanics and, and uh, helpers that are here coming from Australia. But uh, a shame for Trask. I was really hoping that he could have finished, if he'd have finished in the top four or five, which was more than feasible. Um, it, it, it would have been a great day, but it wasn't to be. All right, after two races, here are the team championship standings with Team Abu Dhabi coming up strongly on the uh, heels of what uh, Alex Corella has done the last two races. Just ahead of the Mad Croc uh, team from uh, Finland and then the CTIC China Shenzhen team, they're in that third place. And the victory team starts to get a few more points. They're up to fourth after having no points at all in Portugal. Team Atlantic down the fifth spot. Team Sweden in the 16th position. Then the Blaze performance team. And a good run today by Francesco Catando. The three-boat Maverick team. A couple of rookies, drivers they're learning. And then, of course, the Emirates racing team with uh, three points bringing up the uh, tail end. But a long, long season still ahead. So, really... Interesting uh, weekend, Jonathan. Again, for the second straight year here in uh, Evian, we uh, battled the elements on this water, and uh, the series ended up winning because we ended up, uh, for the second straight year in a row, running both qualifying, practice qualifying in the race in this very same day within about uh, four or five hours of each other, and they got it all in, and tremendous crowds, as you can see, tens of thousands of fans from throughout uh, France and Switzerland coming across the border to watch this race here on Lac Le Mans. And uh, it has been a great day. It was a cool day, but it was a perfect condition on the race circuit for, for people to enjoy the race, and the drivers, I imagine, really enjoyed it too. And uh, as we watch... Uh, the lovely scenery in the background here. Oh, by the way, here's the Drivers' Championship standings. This is where we stand. You can't get any closer than this. Celio goes to the number one spot. He jumps up by one point over Alex Corella. Philippe Schempp, who failed to finish, now 10 points back of the leader. Benevente in 14th place. Nice, steady two runs. And then Torrente jumps up into the top five with 12. And uh, we look farther down. Jonas Anderson and his teammate, Eric Stark, both with seven points. And uh, Bartek Marzowak dropping out of the race, which was a shame because he had such a great performance in Portugal down in ninth place. And uh, Cedric Deguin in the top ten. 
Thaniel Quimsey still uh, rolling along after uh, missing out the opening round, but he's moved up to 11th. And then, of course, Grant Trask not failing uh, or failing to finish today, picking up no points. He's farther down in the standings as you look down and you see the drivers that have uh, yet still hoping to pick up some points in this championship. So, wow, look at the difference between first and second. One point. Celio is your championship leader again, looking for his third crown. <coughs> But, you know, it's still wide open, isn't it? We've got a, quite a number of races to come before the end of this year, and uh, it's great to see that there are going to be so many battling for that uh, World Championship this year. It's, I don't think it's going to be a walk in the park for anybody, that's for sure. Yeah, it's going to be a tremendous uh, run all the way toward the holiday season and the new year, which is typical as we wrap up the season with a pair of key races in the Emirates. And as we wait for the championship uh, podium celebration to start, let's look at the highlights as they come off the start dock. And there you can see a great start by Alex Corella. But look at the run by Sami Celio as he pushes uh, Philippe Shep as hard as he can. There you go on board the three-time world champion from France. Philippe Shep feeling the heat from both sides of the uh, boat as he goes uh, whistling through, sliding to the outside. And Shep at this point was able to hold off Celio as they circled through. And uh, good run for Sean Torrente as he came charging up. And he looks like he was slicing his dicing in his way around. And there he is with Philip Roms as he shoves the uh, finished star off to the side. And uh, Torrente continued to motor his way up from 15th position. Got around Duart Benevente. This was a, a battle down uh, farther down the order as they were battling for about 8th place on the race circuit. And there you could see Alex Corella as he was motoring away. He was uh, going about one second a lap faster than anybody else. And then Grant Trask had a real problem on the uh, early portion of the race as Trask on lap 10 crashed out. And uh, thank goodness he was fine. And he went back and on the restart, it bottled up real quickly. And you could see here Sami Celio snookered the three-time champion. Philippe Sheppard slid by in second place as those two were fighting for the run up to Alex Corella. But at the same time, Torrente gained not one, not two, not three, not four, about five places as he charged his way past both the drivers from uh, Team Sweden. He split the difference and went heading up all the way into third position. So Sean Torrente was running strong. And then you could see Philippe Shep as the Frenchman started to slow. And then again, it was that awful feeling knowing that, oh, no, this can't happen again for not a first, a second, but a third year in a row for Philippe Shep, failing to finish at his home Grand Prix and a good heated battle between Torrente and Sami Celia right to the end. But really, it was Alex Corella who held on, had a steady run, and after a solid month of testing with this team from northern Italy, he was able to hold off the charge of the wily veteran of Celio, and he would fight his way to the front and for the second straight year, it would be the driver from Italy as Alex Corella would continue lap after lap after lap to hold off Sami Celio and Sean Torrente. Torrente backing off just a little bit on those final few laps. He started running 52 second laps, holding on knowing that uh, he was not going to catch Celio and at the same time push Alex Corella any harder so he decided to save the engines and get home and get the points and make it to the podium and Sean Torrente made it up to third place got on the podium the checkered flag came out and deja vu for year number two in a row Alex Corella comes home and wins from the pole and takes the victory here at the Grand Prix of France and you can see the celebration going on with uh, Team Abu Dhabi and the big hugs and a lot of pressure taken off this man, Alex Corella, because of uh, such a professional organization that uh, Team Abu Dhabi has. Excellence is expected, and they got it today with Alex Corella. Yeah, that's a very, very uh, tight-knit team, and there's no question about it. They are now probably the benchmark. Um, as we see there, they're doing some of the interviews. You could see there Philippe Chiap, the uh, current world champion, a little bit dejected. But he'll be back, Steve. There's no question about that. I mean, you know, he was running strong out there. Maybe he had a bit of a problem from the very start there on the, when, when he got the board off the pontoon. But, uh, you know, he, he knows what it needs to do to win a championship. And he's in that third position at the moment, 10 points behind Celio, but uh, still knows that he's got a fair chance for the championship. So there's going to be a lot of work 
work going on between now and the boats being shipped to China. Uh, we have our next race there, second week in uh, in August, and uh, you know that's going to be a big one. We're racing in Harbin, which is in the north of China. There's a great following out there. A couple of hundred thousand people turn up for that event, and uh, it's going to be another spectacular Formula One powered race. I have no I doubt about that. Yeah, the Harbin race really turned uh, the picture of uh, the 2016 campaign around totally. It'll be interesting to see what happens, what develops, and what uh, what kind of drama we can bring to you in Harbin. As you mentioned, a, a new venue, an exciting venue, and at the same time, uh, going to be a difficult race for the drivers to uh, focus in and get uh, world championship points because it is such a demanding circuit. This race course has typically been the roughest race course on the calendar anywhere on throughout the 2017 and 2016 season. But today it really kind of laid down, Jonathan. It just kind of uh, just settled down into a nice, cool, calm uh, lake. And it really they had a rogue wave or two, but it really wasn't much of a fixture today. No, it certainly wasn't as bad as last year, that's for sure. But, you know, we seem to arrive here midweek, the week before the Grand Prix. And the wind is blowing, and I mean... Even yesterday, we couldn't even put a boat on the water. It was so rough. And obviously, some, somebody was looking down at us, Steve, and uh, woke up this morning to uh, slightly drizzly weather. But you looked out onto the lake from uh, where I was staying at the Hidden Hotel, just, uh, just, uh, just above the actual lake itself. And uh, it was almost calm, perfect water for powerboat racing. And uh, that's what's made it into a great race this afternoon. And uh, the nice thing is that there is a little bit of the unknown here, Steve, isn't there? Because as you said, Torrente being caught out by a rogue wave this morning. So those drivers throughout the entire Grand Prix, they had to keep their wits about them because they knew at any time there might be a wave coming into the circuit which could have uh, hindered, uh, hindered their Grand Prix. Well, as we see some of the dignitaries working their way up onto the stage, you see the UIM president off to your left, Raffaele Culli, and uh, the doctor is up there. It's great to have him here. And uh, he always graces us with his presence in France every year. And uh, some of the uh, local dignitaries from around uh, the city of Evian. This city has jumped all over this race. They certainly have. It. Yeah, they have, Steve. I mean, it's, it's been a great race for a couple of years. It's a beautiful location. There's no question about it. And uh, everybody's made us so welcome here. And I heard a, a, a little story earlier today, whether it's true or not, that uh, they, they're going to be... Uh, Resigning a contract with Nicolo de San Germano, uh, the uh, the uh, promoter of the World Championship, for another three years. So, just imagine we're safe now with this Grand Prix, the Grand Prix of France, for the next three years, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. All right, that's going to be really exciting, and it'll be fun to come back here year after year, as you say. The enthusiasm it's always great to race in Europe. This is our final round in Europe here for 2017. As we mentioned, we head off to China, and then we go off to the Middle East to wrap up the. Uh, this campaign and they continue to bring up some of the uh, dignitaries on stage and we're close to meeting the top three drivers face to face and see what their expressions look like after grueling 45 lap venture out there on the water today and uh, tell you what each driver had their own problems and at the same time it was a, a great run for uh, all three drivers because all three drivers needed points today and they got them yeah, but that was a steely drive by uh, uh, Alex Carella from Italy, no question about it. I mean, he, he's looked good all day. He looked good in free practice. The balance of the boat on the water was outstanding. And he never, ever looked in trouble there for the entire race, uh, as he did in qualifying and free practice this morning. And all credit as well, Steve, to the mechanics, because to turn around these boats three times in one day is no mean feat, you know. And for so many boats to finish, with reliability, you know, to, uh, credit to all the people, the helpers, the people that don't get the recognition as the drivers do. Oh, absolutely. And that team was in dire straits after that first race in Portugal. They went home in disarray. I mean, it, the only person that saved them, really, was the driver who won today, uh, Alex Corella. But uh, they only got one of the three boats in the race. And there is Sean Torrente with a victory team out of Dubai. Scott Gilman running the show. And a tremendous run for this driver from Miami and Florida in the USA as he is a five-time USA national champion, a four-time world record speed driver. Now, he's been on the 
top three of the championship the last three years in a row, and he finished second to the champion last year, Philippe Schiff. So Sean Torrente, who early in his career was a bit of a, a, a rogue himself, and uh, he seemed to have settled down quite well, and uh, his intensity has been backed off just a touch, just enough to find him as a real factor as we see Celio coming up. But he now realizes he cannot afford to make mistakes like he did in qualifying today when he turned the boat over again. He's going to have to be really focused now for the rest of the season, not take any chances. But we do know that on his day, he is as good as anybody out there. But Sammy Celio in that second slot, great result. Third in Portugal, moved up to second for this Grand Prix. And uh, I'm sure he'd be pretty happy with that result today, knowing that he's got a a bag more of points and he is in a serious chance of uh, being in a position to uh, to possibly uh, win the championship this year yeah 145 career starts for Sami Celio and this is his 46th podium and he compare that with the man who won today is taking up at the top step there he is Alex Carella the 32 year old from Piacenza Italy for him, this is only his 47th race of his career, but he's got 13 victories. And now this is his 27th podium in 47 races. That's pretty ironic, and that's pretty exceptional. Yeah, he made it look easy, didn't he? I'm sure it wasn't. <laughs> That's for, you know, because they've had a they've had a hell of a race out there today with the conditions that they've had to adhere to. And there we see uh, Guido Capellini, who runs that Abu Dhabi team and uh, been uh, saluted by all the dignitaries there. And, uh, you know, fair play. He's doing a good job. And he's also the winningest driver ever in the history of Grand Prix of France. He's won four times. Now, you won a pair of times, mm. 91 and 94. Guido Capellini's last win was in the year uh, 2000. Yeah. But he won in 95, 96, 99, and 2000. Not a bad run that he had before he retired. Yeah. I must have broken down in the other races. Exactly. No, just pulling your leg there. But uh, great result for that team. And there's probably been a lot of pressure on Capellini because Scott Gilman was running this team before Capellini convinced the Abu Dhabi people that he could do a better job himself. And uh, obviously, it's a big budget team. So Abu Dhabi expecting a lot from that team. They expect people, the drivers, to be on the podiums, at least if not winning. And, uh, you know... He does look as though he's getting it all together, but uh, still a long way to go to the end of the season. And as we listen to the national anthems, yes, uh, exciting pictures that you're seeing here up close from the podium celebration here facing the lovely lake. And the thousands of people Woo! that are underneath the top three to celebrate. And and I think it's great that uh, Capolini made it up there on the podium. How ironic for a driver who has 10 world championships and four victories here in France. Well, that'll wrap it up this afternoon. For those leaving us now, thanks for being with us. For my partner, Jonathan Jones, along with our great international broadcasting crew, saying whether it's good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever in the world you may be at the moment, you've been watching the most exciting racing entertainment on water, the UIM Formula One World Championship. Don't forget to join us coming up in the race in the middle of August as we race in Harbin on the 12th and 13th for the next round of the championship. In the meantime, you can follow all the news by going to either Facebook or our official website, F1H2O.com. So on a spectacular day here on the shore of Lac Lemain in Evian, France, I'm Steve Michael saying go out and make it a great day. So long.